Well, as a grouse hunter, we daydream about walks in October all year long. And I'm excited that my first walk of October is about to take place. It's October 2nd and I'm back up here grouse hunting. It's late afternoon, so hopefully birds are starting to come out for the evening to feed a little bit and be a little bit more active. Sun's starting to go down. We got a couple hours of daylight left and it's a really nice temperature out. It's cooler today in the 60s. It's just a little bit warm still when the sun shines down on you, but it's not bad out overall. It's a really, really beautiful day to be out here. Not a cloud in the sky, so I'm excited to go after it and see what we find this evening. The spot that I'm gonna hunt this evening is a 17 year old cut. So it's a little bit older, but it's got some really good structure around it. There's a big pond on the backside with a swamp that drains off it and a couple creeks that flood into it. So there's a lot of moisture in the area and I feel like that's a really important part to this early season because the birds are, you know, they're on water right now. There's also a lot of different vegetation and habitat that grows up in those low soil, dark soil areas. So there's a lot of food that that creates as well. And those birds really like hugging the edges of that type of cover this time of year. We're gonna go back there, give it a shot this evening and see what we find. There's some pine stands that are mixed in, plenty of aspen, a couple different food sources throughout the area. And I'm just excited to have October back here. Let's go see what we find. We've been working around the back edge of this aspen cut. An ember headed in this way, made a cast in here, went on point once, and she relocated, moved up. She's back on point right now, and I'm making my way to her slowly. Looks like a good woody spot. Might be a woodcock sitting here. There it goes. Good girl. It was a woodcock. I didn't have the best look at it. It hit the top of these trees and jetted out. I just had a real quick look at it. I just more or less wanted to shoot there, give the dog a reward. She did a nice job pointing that bird. We've just been working down this road edge. Remember, she's on point right here. There's a little cluster of pines in here. I see her standing right there. She's on point just next to that little edge of pines. I'm gonna try and sneak in here. And see if anything takes flight. Whoa. Good girl. She was right there and that bird was sitting right there. My, my shot pretty much smacked this tree right here. <laughs> so that's where my pattern went. Bird kept on flying. Well, our walk last night was kind of a big swing and miss. We didn't have a whole lot of action. It was a pretty quiet night. Only came across one woodcock and two grouse and the two birds that I did shoot at, I swung and missed on both of them. But that's how it goes when you're rough grouse hunting sometimes. Not every walk can be the magical walk that, you know, you have a 20 bird plus walk and you're getting a lot of good shooting opportunities. So you'll have times like that where you go into a spot with expectations of finding some birds, but you just don't find a whole lot. The birds aren't there. It could be the wrong time of day or the wrong time of year. Or the birds just aren't there right then when you're walking through at the moment. But this morning, I'm gonna do a little bit of exploring. I'm at a brand new area I've never been to before and I want to talk real quick about what I look for as far as scouting wise before I go into an area and how I kind of come to this decision to go hunt a spot and what I look for is 
multiple different habitat types in one big block area. So like, let's say it's a mile by mile area that you're looking at, or maybe it's even a little bit bigger than that. I'm looking for a place that has multiple objectives to it. So I want different age structured cuts, aspen cuts in the area. And I also want a mix of some pines, some lowland areas, and if you can find some water in that area, that's a huge plus, especially for this time of year in the early season. Like I mentioned last night, I feel like having water around is really important to these first few weeks of season, especially the first part. So where I'm at right now this morning, there's a couple different age class cuts in here that range in eight years old all the way to 20 years old. So I've kind of got a good balance of older habitat where, you know, birds have been established for the last 20 years living in the area and then some younger cuts where they can begin to transition into new habitat that's growing up and coming into prime age. And on top of that, there's a few different types of pine stands in here. There's some white pines, red pines, jack pines. So there's a few different conifers stands for birds to roost and have shelter from and then there's also a big creek that flows along the bottom side of all this and I know there's a beaver dam up there from looking at the map and yeah beavers are what as well are big asset in areas too because they're like the forest managers in a way almost they're constantly cutting stuff and you're getting new regrowth from beavers along those creeks so it's always a plus to have beavers in the area when you're looking for grouse hunting spots because there's water and there's also just some spots where those beavers are constantly cutting, making new habitat. So that's kind of what I'm looking at in this spot. And I'm assuming I'm gonna find some food back here, probably some acorns and some soft mass crops. And that's what I'm gonna go with this morning. I'm gonna go take a little bit of a couple hour loop through here and see what we find. I'm gonna grab Aspen, collar her up, and hopefully we can find some birds exploring some new territories. Whoa, bird just took flight right here. Whoa, there goes a third bird. They're behind us. Aspen got birdie right over here. Kept snaking up. She's locked up on point right here in front of me now. There goes the bird. Aspen's on point right here. We we're just cutting through this open forest back to the trail. She locked up right in front of me. There goes the bird. It's just on the other side of this clearing. This is where it all started this morning, right under this little small group of just these little apple trees. I'm not 100% sure 
if these are thorn apple, hawthorn, if those are the same exact thing or what. But this is where it all started this morning. And I actually drove into this spot this morning. This is the first time I've ever been in here. And when I came across this little group of them this morning and I saw that there was some fruit hanging on them, I turned the truck right around and went back and parked and decided that I was gonna make my way through this trail. And this leads back to a couple other cuts as well. But the soft mass crop this year has been kind of hit or miss. There's been spots where some have had some and others have just been bare and empty. But this year when the food kind of just spread out a little bit, if you find one of these, it can be a grouse magnet. And that's what I was hoping for this morning. And sure enough, we came in here the first five minutes from the truck and dog went on point right there. And those birds were sitting just on the other side of the trail here in these pines over here. They were probably out here feeding earlier this morning we're starting to make their way back into the cover over here but there's three birds sitting there and then she just kept working into the cover in the woods there and we ended up finding another three or four more birds back in there so i'm just going to keep working down this trail and maybe we'll find another couple clumps of these trees like this in the area and see if we find some more birds okay this is kind of a weird situation dogs on point right there and I look over and I saw a grouse. It's right next to this stump. There it is on the ground. There it goes. I'm pretty sure I missed it. That happened really fast. That was kind of strange. The dog got up in front of me and was trailing back and she stopped right on the edge of this small little rise right here. And I looked over to my left and I saw this grouse stand up underneath this pine tree. It's probably why I missed it because I was just staring at the bird the whole time. That's what usually happens. We've been working along this creek edge still and came upon this big log laying right here so i wandered over to it and was just curious if any grouse had been drumming on it and you can see right there there's been a grouse that's been hanging out up on this log got a couple droppings right there that's pretty cool to see so just another sign that there's birds in the area espen's back on point again there she is right there it's probably another woodcock sitting in here. This stuff looks pretty good for woodcock. But you never know, maybe a grouse will surprise us. There it goes. Nope. I was off balance on my footing there. That bird just got out in front of me as I was trying to turn. I couldn't quite turn fast enough. Figured there had to be a woodcock sitting in here somewhere. That was it. So now this afternoon, I'm not too far from where I hunted this morning. I'm just across the road, probably about a half a mile from where I was this morning. I'm gonna work the other part of this section. And again, talking about what I said earlier with you know diversity and different covers in a block that you're hunting, there is a really, really young cut here and I'm ignoring that, I'm not hunting that, but it's good to see, it's probably a year, two years old. And then there's another 10 year old cut, and then there's a third 20 year old cut that's pretty old. So I think between the mix of those three cuts, there's definitely some birds in the area. And from what I saw this morning, I know that this area in general is holding some birds. So hopefully we're gonna have a good walk this afternoon. And I'm just gonna kind of stroll along some edges and work some openings throughout this cover and see if we can find any birds that are out feeding and loafing around trying to soak up a little bit of sunlight for the last few hours of the day. So I'm gonna grab Yeti and we're gonna go see what we find. Yeti. Yep, there's a grouse in there. I can hear it squeaking. There it goes. Whoa. Yeah, Yeti, we just started. The truck is right there. And he came down this line 
and just slammed onto point right on the side of this trail. And I could hear that bird start putting in there. And it didn't. There goes another one. I'm pretty sure I missed. So that was two birds right off the start, right next to the truck. Yeah, he went on point right here. And I could hear that bird start putting in this little clump right here. And I didn't think it was gonna hold and wait for me. And I took a few more steps and it got up and took off on the other side of this. And that second bird took off over here just inside this pine edge. Well, that's cool though, that's a good start. Yeti. Yeti. It's a woodcock. I missed. Okay, I just missed that woodcock. And Yeti's back on point. Not too far down from where he last pointed that bird. It's probably another woodcock sitting in here, I would guess. <clears throat> Looks good. Two woodcock. They got up from underneath that pine tree right there. I saw two of them getting up in the air and I kind of was like, oh crap, oh crap. I missed again. Come on, good oh, boy. Yeah, he's on point right here. Just threw some brush here. He's locked up. That bird, wow. That bird, talk about sitting tight. I probably could have let that bird get out a little bit farther, but my nerves got the best of me. Good boy, that was too much excitement. Give, wow. Talk about grouse sitting tight. Dog was on point right here. He got birdie and trailed up to the edge of this and that bird was literally sitting right here. And I dusted it. I took the shot just a little bit too early, but I had such a good look at it and I've been missing birds this whole trip and I wasn't letting this one slip away. Nice work, Yeti. Really good job. Awesome. There we go. This is our six grouse we've moved tonight. Been getting some good dog work out of Yeti. I just haven't been able to get shots at the birds. And I was just a little too excited and amped up on this one because the dog looked real serious there. He looked good and I was moving in on point. And I just can't believe that bird flushed dang near right in front of the dog and almost right at my feet here. And I had such a good look at it coasting away. I just pulled up and shot. Well, I'm just going to take a moment and enjoy this. Got some sunlight coming through on these trees. Golden hour. It's pretty back here. It's quiet. 
still. Last night, I finally got the monkey off her back and was able to knock a grouse down. But of course, uh, I probably missed a handful of birds before I finally got that look at that grouse. But that one, that one shot that I got last night at that grouse made up for all the really tight, close shots and thick cover that I missed. So I'll take it. That was a beautiful look at a rough. You really don't get too many opportunities like that ever to see a rough up close like that, flushing in the open at your feet. And to be able to hit a layup shot like that for once feels good. Normally when I get a shot like that, the bird just keeps flying and I'm standing there dumbfounded, shaking my head, looking at my gun going, how in the world did I miss that? So we'll take it. Last night was a really good walk, especially for exploring some new areas again. I think I moved eight grouse, which isn't a whole lot of birds, but it was enough to keep us steady and busy throughout the evening. And actually at the end of light, I heard a handful of grouse in the area drumming. So that's a good sign. That means there's more birds in the area because when grouse drum in the fall, it's usually a territorial thing. It's because there's other birds that are starting to move into what they claim is they, their area. So it means there's more birds around in the area than what you're seeing. So instead of leaving fish to find fish, I'm gonna stick it out here again this morning and run this same area. I'm gonna hunt a different part of the section that I'm in than I hunted last night, but I know there's birds around in this area. We've been having good luck. So I'm gonna take Fox out this morning. She's the chosen one and see if we can get into anything else. Find some birds. It's uh, about nine o'clock right now. Sun's just starting to peek out of some clouds. We had some cloud cover this morning. So it's nice that a little bit of cooler weather has rolled in finally today. It's not gonna be quite as warm as it's been the last couple days with this uh, cloud cover we got today. So I think it's gonna be a really, really nice day for running a few dogs today. So you're up to bat today, Fox. What do you say, little girl? Wanna go find some birds this morning, huh? Yeah, yeah, you ready to go hunting? You ready to go, girl? That's a good girl, Fox. All right, let's go see what we find this morning. You ready? Fox. Wee. That's what I always picture going through Fox's head as she's running through the woods. Wee. Wee! I've been working down this old logging trail that runs between a cut. Fox made a cast in here on my left. She locked up on point. Trying to spot her before I cut in. This looks like a good woodcock spot. Wouldn't be surprised if that's what was sitting here as a woodcock. There it goes. Whoa. Whoa. Dead bird. Dead bird, fox. And there goes a grouse. Dead bird, dead bird find. So we just moved two woodcock right here. And a grouse flushed right over there. Dead bird find. Whoa. This is interesting, real quick. She went to pick this woodcock up. 
and a grouse flew out of this tree. So I'm just gonna pick this bird up. Nice job, girl. Let's see if we can find another grouse in here. I know another one flushed up here and it didn't land too far. Fox is back on point. Right up here. We just flushed a grouse right back here. I released her. She snaked up here, went back on point. The bird. Wow. <laughs> Good job, Fox. Fetch here. Fetch here. That bird was sitting in this tree right here. Dog was at the base of it on point, and she was actually looking up at the bird. Good job, Fox. Fetch here. Fetch here. Good girl. Here. Good job. Good job, Fox. Good job, girl. We gotta we gotta work on your retrieve with birds a little bit. You do a real good job fetching anything else. That's a pretty bird. Really nice looking grouse. Nice job, fox. Nice job. So we just picked up a woodcock and a grouse within a matter of a couple minutes. That's cool. Good stuff right there. Yeah, she's been pointing some woodcock in here. A grouse flushed on us back there. She snaked up, went on point again. And that bird was just sitting up in the tree. I've almost wondered if it's still just a touch too wet outside in the woods yet for these birds to be coming down yet. And that bird was sitting in a tree is locked up right here. The bird. Fetch here. Come on, Fox. Fetch here. Fetch here. Good job, Fox. Here. Good girl. Here. Come on, Fox. Fetch here. Good job. Here. Good job. Good job. Come here, Fox. Good job, Fox. Good girl. Good girl. Nice work, Fox. Good job, Fox. There we go. That's how I like to see a retrieve girl. That was much better. Really nice point. This woodcock took flight right in front of her and I got a good shot at it and knocked it down. Nice job, Fox. Beautiful point, really nice retrieve. You got the hang of it, girl. You got the hang of it. This has been a really fun and special walk with Fox this morning. Has got into a few birds and she's been looking really good. And Fox was a pup that we bred. She was out of a litter that we had with Ember and she's two years old now and it's really been a fun journey you know raising her from birth to be able to come out hunting with her and see her do what she was bred and born to do and pointing birds retrieving birds getting me good shot opportunities so it's just really special with a pup that we bred and developed all on our own fox locked up on pointing here and i can hear a grouse putting in the cover. See if I can make it to her before this bird takes flight. She's not too far. There she is right there. I see the bird. It's in a tree right there. Dog's on point, she sees it too. There it is. 
is right there. Look at that, you don't see this too often. Grouse in the tree. Dog's on point right there, she's staring at it. Are you gonna fly, bird? A bird. Good job, fox. Fetch here. Fox here. Good girl here. Good job, fox. Good girl here. Good girl. Come here. Here. Fox here. Good job, girl. Good girl. Good job, fox. Good job. Good job, fox. That a girl. You got a mouthful of feathers, don't you? All right, well, sometimes they're just young and dumb. And when you get a freebie like that, I'm not gonna pass it up. That was pretty crazy. Dog was on point right here and I could hear this bird putting from the trail going put, 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 put. So I knew the dog had to be close to it. And I walked in here and she was standing on point. She was actually looking at it. She was staring at it. And the bird was sitting in a tree. Just like the last one. Birds have been sitting in trees this morning. And I was underneath that thing. Shaking a branch at it. Just trying to get it to fly. And it finally took flight. And I made the shot. All I could think about though in my head the entire time. As I was trying to get that bird to, to fly. Was like was watch this bird's gonna take flight and I'm gonna miss this thing that's cool but I didn't miss it's two layups that I've had in the last 24 hours that I've actually hit usually those layups I I miss and they keep flying that's really cool Fox is doing a really good job on this walk really proud of this dog and it's just like I mentioned a minute ago it's a pretty, pretty special experience to be able to share this with a dog that you bred and have raised from birth and been trying to develop into a good gun dog and bird dog. She's on the right path. That walk with Fox turned into a really fun hunt. We were able to come out with a few birds in the bag and she was doing her job well, pointing birds, finding birds, and I was getting some good shooting opportunities. And normally shooting opportunities like that in the grouse woods, especially this time of year, are hard to come by. And that's kind of how this all started out the first couple days of me hunting up here. I was just getting glimpses of birds taken off and thick cover and I just wasn't getting the good shooting opportunities I was looking for and I missed a handful of birds before I was able to finally knock one down but eventually a blind squirrel finds a nut every now and then and we came across a few birds that wanted to play and gave us some really really good looks at them. Still a lot of season to go, October's just getting started right now and it's just going to get better over the next couple weeks as the temperatures continue to drop and all the leaves and the cover is going to drop as well so a lot of good grouse hunting still to come over the next few weeks and I'm excited to be back up here again at some point but I'm gonna leave it at that and head back home and enjoy my memories from this trip hopefully there's something in this video that you guys were able to take away and use on your next hunt to help find some more birds and I think I'll just mention it one last time you know just look for diversity that's what I look for in every bird that I hunt it doesn't matter if it's prairie birds pheasants rough grouse woodcock whatever just look for diversity in an area a place that has a lot of different habitat ecosystems within a block or a chunk of area, you know, just different objectives that you can go through and hunt. That's always kind of been my strategy, and that's what I put to use over the last couple days, trying to find some birds in new areas that I hadn't hunted before, and it worked out well. We found some birds, and like I said, got some good shooting opportunities. As far as bird numbers go this year, it's been a pretty good year overall. I don't think it's a banner year or a great year by any stretch, but if you're finding birds, you should be able to find enough that's gonna keep you busy 
on a walk. Uh, some of the brood sizes have been smaller than I've seen in the past, um, two, three, four birds together. And I think that's a result from some of the spring, spring rains and summer rains that we had this year. Uh, there was a stretch in June where we had a lot of cold, colder weather and some rain that moved through a lot of the grouse region. And I do think it wiped some of the broods out this, this early summer when they started hatching. So there's a lot of variables that go into bird numbers overall. That's just kind of my take on it from what I'm seeing over the first couple weeks of hunting. Uh, some of the spots that I've gone into that have produced birds for me in the past regularly have just been kind of lifeless, they seem. And I, again, I think it's, you know, due to those early summer rains that we had wiping broods out. But nonetheless, there's still plenty of birds to be found if you get out and, you know, you do your work and put some miles on, walking, driving around, trying to find the right cover. The birds are still here. There's still plenty of birds to find and plenty of birds to hunt and get some shooting opportunities at. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up end this video on that and i hope you guys enjoyed this thanks for following along and i'll be back up here soon hunting again shortly in the north woods after grouse so i'll see you guys back out there